before I sort of saw the inner workings of how those organizations work, I felt the caucuses were important because we were sort of a constant voice in the ear of the organization to make sure um, to pay attention to diversity. And so I think that we've helped diversify the organization um, even when it wanted to diversify and didn't know how. And I think um, from an inside point of view, um, it's clear to me that the organization, people in the organization want it to change and move forward. They don't always know how to do that. Um, and, and I think that the caucuses bring a lot of imaginative, innovative thinking that the organization can take advantage of. Um, again, I see, mo I see caucus members, not just Native caucus members, but all the caucus members, um, the Queer Caucus, the, you know, the, the Committee on the Status of Women, um, the Labor Caucus, all the ethnic caucuses. I see them. Those are the people that I see at the, the Executive Committee meeting. They're the people on the ballots. They're the people saying yes to that invitation to you know, be considered for leadership. Um, I see them as real leadership pipelines for the organization. Um, it's clear to me, as someone now who's an officer of the organization, that that's, what the, that's the best use of the caucuses. That there's a, a sort of private use of the caucuses that's for building scholarly support, but there's an organizational function there. There are pipelines for leadership. That's the way you find out who's willing to stand up and do the work. Um, and who's willing to take the chances. I don't feel like there's some invisible hand anymore. The invisible hand is the body of C's members. It's not in Urbana. It's, it's, it's the body of C's members. So the, I think that makes the caucuses even more important. I think I, the thing I'm most proud of at the caucus is that, um, that we exist and that we've managed to maintain um, a level of support for scholars entering the field who want to do work on Indians that wasn't there when I was entering the field. Um, there's a place to go, there are people to ask, um, there's a body of work um, that we've published. Um, I mean, you still do a search and it doesn't look like there's very much, but um, there's about a hundred times more out there now than there was before. Um, we are included in all the sort of big calls for everyone to contribute. Um, we're seen as one of the special interest groups. Um, some people would say that that isn't, that isn't an achievement, but for me it is an achievement that Native people have a place um, and always have a face. Um, Joyce and Risa have been extraordinarily persistent at going to every committee on convention concerns and asking questions about why aren't there more Native things on the program, um, they've been um, incredibly good at being supportive in that kind of hands-on way. People are trying to put proposals together, trying to put, put you know, panels together, um, at giving feedback to people who've never written a proposal, at helping folks get panels together for the convention, um, at providing people with um, just all kinds of information. You know, I mean, you can write, the caucus list isn't hugely active, but you can write and say, um, I need a book that does this, and people will talk to you about it. So um, to have that level of support professionally, for me, is, is a real achievement. Um, it wasn't there. There was no one to give me those answers. And so to be able to provide them is huge. It's a thing. We created a field. I have an audience in my mind now that isn't a kind of random put together all the people that might like me audience. It's a real audience of people I want to speak to um, who have knowledge about what I do and who hold me to a level of accountability um, that might not have been there otherwise. Um, and and that's, that's made my work better. It's made it, me able to think of my work theoretically in a much richer way. Um, these are also my friends. These are people that I've known for a long time, whose, um, whose lives have enriched mine. You know, so when Joyce gets involved with a, a Wampanoag language program, or when, you know, Risa had a baby, um, you know, we talk all the time about our aches and pains <laughs> as well. Um, just that, having that group of sort of friends in your workplace is really unusual and a luxury and I could totally treasure it. Um, the degree to which in the last five years young women who are in 
who want to do Native Studies and Latina Studies, who come to the caucus and um, who I've gotten to know, that, I, I don't have, I don't actually have real words to describe how that feels, to watch that happen and to watch them turn to me, to Joyce, Teresa, um, as mentors, as people who have um, value and worth in their lives, not just in terms of I read your scholarship and I like it, but how do you do this? How do I go up for tenure? What should my tenure narrative look like? Like the whole spectrum of interactions that you can have with someone um, from being a close, close friend to being someone you mentor and get to know over a period of years has been a gift, a huge gift. The question of where we're going and what our goals should be is at the forefront of my mind. Um, and it's something that Joyce and Risa and I have talked about. Joyce and Risa and I are still listed as the co-chairs of the caucus. We've been co-chairs of the caucus for a decade at least. Um, partly because we were the ones who had jobs and could do it and partly because you know it's easier to do it if we all do it together. Um, I, I don't know that our caucus will ever have a single chair I don't know that we're arranged that way, <laughs> but um, but we've talked a lot about um, the sort of there's a there's a critical mass of next generation folks moving up and about sort of handing the job of the caucus to them um, and being able to kind of step back and watch it evolve. I think we have to do that for the caucus to grow. Um, I think that um, there have been a lot of talk about publication projects. Angela Haas and I are working on a publication project on Native Rhetorics right now um, that can be sort of fomented in the caucus. Um, we've been good about getting on the program and doing a kind of the status of Native Rhetorics kind of thing. And I think that um, I think the caucus can serve as a gathering place for folks who want to kind of push the edges a little more. Um, I'm hyper aware that me being elected to the position of program chair, then associate chair and chair of the seas is a huge mark for the caucus. It's a, it's a huge sort of moment for us. Um, and, and I, in the days when I can't stand to think of myself as like the big target, um, I, I think of that as like, I'm not there really for me. I'm there because this pushes our scholarship to the fore and our ways of thinking about scholarship to the fore and that that's a moment we have to really take advantage of um, and in order to move us forward. But again, I always think that the, the best thing an organization can do is um, train a pipeline of leaders. Um, members of our caucus tend to be leaders in the organization. I think that's true of all of the Latina caucus and the black caucus as well.